Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Rumpel. I'm an undergraduate here at UFE, and me and three other students from UFE had the chance of going to Tanzania last summer uh, for three months uh, through the QES uh, scholarship program. Uh, it was a great experience for us all, and it's led to more opportunities for every single one of us, I think. So here's a little bit about what we did. We're doing an extremely condensed version. Our paper was 75 pages long, and I think we've been given four minutes, so we got to go quick. <laughs> And it's called Supermarket Food Procurement Practices in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> All right, I'm Sierra Nicole, um, and I'll just dive into it for you guys. So just a little bit of a literature review of um, what our project was. Um, looking at supermarket proliferation in the global south, and it's a multifaceted process. So those are um, different components of globalization, liberalization, and urbanization within these um, urban contexts. Um, so a little background review on uh, Dar es Salaam. Supermarkets started to appear in Dar es Salaam in about the 1990s, um, with foreign direct investment playing a large role um, in the development of these supermarkets. Um, and the investors um, coming in, their procurement strategies were often based um, within their own country, so, and based on the importation of products, leading to the exclusion of local smallholder farmers, um, which is an issue because about 75% of Tanzanians are relying on agriculture for their livelihood. So for them to be completely excluded from um, the developing food chain was an issue and is an issue. Next slide. So what we actually did. Uh, so we had two parts of our um, paper, and the first one was an uh, observational supermarket survey. So this is where we completed surveys in uh, different supermarkets, which are on the map there. Uh, we looked at supermarket location, socioeconomic status of the surrounding neighborhood, uh, the variety of food they sold, the availability, availability of uh, local staples, and general supermarket logistics. And phase two was a formal interview survey where we actually sat down with supermarket managers. Most of them, um, there was a couple Tanzanian, but most of them were not Tanzanians. Um, we talked about their sources of their products, the barriers they faced of sourcing local products, and their transportation means of their products. Uh, there, as with any uh, research, there is limitations, and ours were our language barriers, as we did not speak the local language and everyone did not speak la uh, English. Uh, well, we also weren't able to uh, get a large uh, sample size for all of Tanzania, but we did get a decent amount within Dar es Salaam. And then there was also the supermarket manager's answers. Since there has been some conflict between the government and supermarkets, they may have felt the need to give politically correct answers to protect themselves. So we're quickly just gonna go through the five main themes of our research project. Uh, the first is market demographics and supermarket location strategy. So what we found is where the supermarkets were based themselves was based on the surrounding socioeconomic uh, class of the citizens. So they were mostly catering to high upper class Tanzanians along with ex the expatriate communities. Uh, so what you're seeing is mostly the richer areas which includes the peninsula, which is highlighted in yellow and in Mezi Beach area which uh, is highlighted in red. Uh, though, and as it has also been stated several times in this, is that there is a rise of a middle class. So that is where we are seeing a diffusion outwards out of those uh, high socioeconomic areas and where they're starting to cater to more of the average uh, Tanzanian, including the middle class. The next item that we looked at was transportation infrastructure and the need for properly developed roadways and roadway networks, uh, both interregionally and regionally. So. Um, whether that's the importation of products um, or the, the, regional, the regional traffic congestion within Dar es Salaam itself um, and how those, those products are getting there, whether it's refrigerated or non-refrigerated transport trucks. Um, and that leads to the, the longer shelf life and the higher quality of the, of the, the produce that's coming to the supermarkets. Um, the next one we looked at was formal and informal sourcing strategies. So within these supermarket interviews, we found that um, some supermarkets were domestically um, procuring their, their produce, um, but they were also, a large quantity of them were importing these. Um, obviously the, the benefits of domestic procurement strategies, it's less expensive, but we also um, found that they were getting lower quality and quantity, and they weren't getting consistent um, consistency in any of these. Um, and then with importation, it's more expensive, um, but they were getting a higher quality, a higher consistency, um, and the higher quantities that they needed in order to 
um, supply their stores. Um, but we also, with both of these um, different categories, we also found that some supermarkets kind of had a hybrid landscape of both of these. Um, so they would, they would be importing some of the produce that they weren't able to get in Tanzania um, for various reasons, but they were, they were also getting local fish from the fish market in Dar es Salaam or um, various other, other places that were local. Uh, the fourth point is the cultural resistance to modern food uh, retailing. Uh, though most supermarkets were not catering to the average Tanzanian, we did find that the, uh, some supermarkets were, and those ones were usually uh, situated in lower or middle income areas. Uh, this included um, stocking bloody or uncurated meat. Uh, one supermarket um, manager said that when he started stocking them, they started flying off the shelves because this meat is seen as fresher to the local Tanzanian. Uh, another one was he was from South Africa and he said they were stocking uh, local oranges which had a lot of blemishes on them and he felt they weren't good enough for his store but they were stocking them because Tanzanians still felt that they were fine and normal. That's what they saw in the surrounding wet markets. So the final point we're looking at is um, how, small far far how small holder farmers can benefit. Um, so the presence of supermarkets is increasing the rate of development within the food system. Um, this is because of um, foreign direct investment, land accusation, as we've, we've heard already today, um, economies of scale throughout the, um, the large um, farms and orchards down in uh, South Africa or Kenya. Um, and um, the fact that supermarkets, there's, a, there's an opportunity to be had here um, with supermarkets partnering with these smallholder farmers with cooperatives and inclusive business models. Um, and I think Jeremy is going to talk about more um, within his project within Nairobi. Um, just looking at the, the, the real opportunity there is for these supermarkets to really partner with, um, with these local smallholder farmers and not have them left behind. Okay, so um, just as supermarkets are changing the food system landscape in Dar es Salaam, it's happening in Nairobi as well, um, albeit at, at differing rates. I would say um, Nairobi's modern food retailing economy is further along in its development path than, than Dar es Salaam, and I think the data here may illustrate that. Um, so Kenya is really the, the epicenter of modern food retailing in East Africa, uh, with many Kenyan supermarkets expanding into regional countries such as Tanzania. Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, um, understanding the changing food supply chain systems uh, within which the, they operate is key to formulating informed policy discourse uh, that can facilitate the development of uh, secure and sustainable food systems. So financed by the Institutional Partnership for Human Development, or IPHD, as part of the uh, food systems project overseen by Dr. Alex Witte at the East African Institute, um, Lisa Harrington and I had the opportunity to conduct research on uh, modern food retailing outlets in Nairobi and the food supply chain systems from which they're procuring their perishable food products. So Lisa, I'm gonna get you to stand up for a second. <laughs> so while she's not on stage, she played a major role in, in this research happening. I'd probably still be arguing with the NACMAP manager about getting an interview if it weren't for her. So, um, so jumping into the, um, the methodology, uh, quite similar to uh, the methodology Josh presented, uh, with the research in Dar es Salaam. Um, so uh, eight interview surveys were conducted that examined 30 fruit and vegetable items and six animal products, the cultivation source and packaging of these products, as well as seasonality of supply. Uh, the survey also probed into the factors that dictate food procurement strategies. Uh, participants within the study were selected to represent the major players in Nairobi's modern food retailing economy with smaller specialized modern food retailers also being represented. So some major limitations, very similar to Dar es Salaam as well. Um, well, refusal to participate was on one occasion an issue. Um, managers withholding information or skewing the presentation of information to protect their own interests. And as well, um, a noteworthy lack of traceability throughout the food supply chain system um, within which these, these retailers are operating. So, uh, more specifically, uh, our sample size looked at Nakumat, Tuskies, Naivas, Chandurana, Food Plus, Zucchinis, uh, Field Fresh Vegetables, The Corner Shop, uh, and Gourmet Meats. Um, in virtually all instances, we were redirected to the head office of these retailers, 
Um, so the distribution on the map is represented accordingly. And uh, the next uh, bar graph here just kind of il illustrates the scales at which each of these um, retailing outlets are operating with NACMAT obviously being the giant there. Um, it's also worth noting that Corner Shop, while they only had two uh, branch locations, they were actually supplying all of the fresh produce for Chandarana, which has 11. So um, they're actually a, a larger uh, player in, in modern food retailing in, in Nairobi than this graph may actually indicate. Uh, so diving into the results here, um, in terms of customer demographics, um, managers within the study noted that customers were predominantly female, with only two noting gender balance being equal. Uh, this is an indication that domestic labor as well as food supply and variety to households is widely executed and governed by females. Furthermore, accessibility to modern food retailing is isolated to higher income groups. All eight managers noted that the upper middle class was their primary customer demographic. Um, in terms of source location, um, of the eight participants within the study, five procure between 61 and 80 percent of their perishable food products from domestic sources, while three procure um, 81 to 100 percent. So this is an indication that the agriculture sector in Kenya is able to produce perishable food products that meet the high demands of the supermarket customer demographic. Of the five managers indicating that 61 to 80 percent of their perishable food products are procured from domestic sources. Um, many noted that this was the case because of um, specialty food products that they were procuring from Europe, such as high-end cheeses. Um, in fact, when asking only about the 36 food items that we, um, that we focused on, um, all managers noted that 81 to 100 percent of the products were coming from domestic sources. The only items that were regularly imported were garlic, generally from China. Um, apples and oranges uh, from South Africa and uh, Egypt, depending on the time of year. Um, so more specifically on where some of the food is coming from, I have two um, food maps here to show you, um, Sukumi Wiki being the first one. So given the lack of traceability, many managers were unable to provide the exact location um, of their um, perishable food product source. So. Uh, based on the information that we could gather, um, in many instances, produce is coming from peri-urban spaces and satellite cities in the Nairobi area, so not too far away from where the supermarkets are actually located. Um, Sukuma wiki, a Kenyan food staple, is predominantly being grown in Limuru um, and is traveling on average 38.5 kilometers from the farm gate to the supermarket shelf. Um, the next one, uh, we'll look at potatoes. Um, as another food staple example, are uh, being grown in Limuru as well, um, and Narok and, and Meru too. On average, potatoes are traveling about 126 kilometers uh, between the farm gate and uh, the market shelf. So this data illustrates that many of the produce items modern food retailers sell are coming from nearby sources, meaning that food miles are, are quite minimal. Uh, furthermore, I think it's also worth indicating that um, while so many items are coming from peri-urban spaces, such as Limuru and Kikuyu, um, food supply may prove to be vulnerable from climatic variations and extreme weather conditions. So some of the factors that uh, were influencing food procurement strategies for, for managers. Uh, modern food retailers in Nairobi take into account a plurality of factors when making food procurement related decisions. Um, however, the quality, the quantity, and the consistency of the food product is of utmost importance. So this is a reflection of the high standards that their customers hold them to. Also important to note is that seven managers noted price as being somewhat of a factor. So in weighing these factors with others, um, or the price factor with others, it's evident that managers are willing to compromise on price if it ensures that they're able to procure the quality and quantity in the consistency um, that their customers are demanding. Two out of eight managers noted that convenience was not at all a factor when seeking to procure products, while five managers identified it as somewhat of a factor. In addition, five out of eight managers uh, noted that the variety of a um, operating in separate peri-urban spaces of Nairobi. Managers noted that uh, dealing directly with farmers allows them to be more involved in quality control, um, and they quite often provided uh, expert advice agriculture training and extension services to the farmers that they have partnerships with. 
So based on factors influencing a food procurement decision, managers are willing to pay more for products so long as they meet the standards to which their customers are demanding. So this is an indication that farmers, when partnering with supermarkets, um, are, have much to benefit. Uh, retailers will also turn away food products that do not meet their standards, of course. Um, in these instances, multiple managers noted that farmers um, would then just take their food products to the informal market instead and, and sell it at a, at a lower price. So this is perhaps an indication of the difference in quality, sanitation, and health standards between the formal and informal food markets. Um, extension services, such as NACMAT's use of the French-owned inspection, verification, and testing um, certification company, uh, SGS, uh, shows the level of sophistication at which some modern food retailers um, are beginning to operate and the benefits their suppliers are gaining as a result. SGS does <coughs> rigorous testing uh, for NACMAT on produce procured from, from new farm gate sources, while regular suppliers have their products randomly tested every three months. Um, so in regards to relationships with these farmers, all eight managers, whether it be supermarkets or the smaller specialized modern food retailers, noted that um, the farmers that they deal with are informed actors within the food supply chain system. Furthermore, many suppliers were utilizing greenhouses to grow food products such as tomatoes and capsicum, which is an indication of the capital investment that they've been putting into their businesses. In instances where retailers were not using contracted wholesalers, Farmers would often package their food products prior to delivery, which is a form of value addition along the su supply chain. This goes against the narrative of African farmers being uninformed actors who are at the mercy of who, uh, who they supply to, um, generally a middleman in a long and inefficient food supply chain system. In the context of Nairobi um, and the modern retail sector, it seems that they, they are informed um, and they act with their own agency, actively seeking new uh, ways to improve their businesses. With that being said, many managers also noted that these farmers operate um, with limited resources. So based on this research, it, research, it's evident that modern food retailing in Nairobi is increasing the scales at which they've previously operated and are shifting towards centralized and regionalized procurement networks and uh, specialized wholesaler uh, supply systems. Through the use of quality control services such as SGS, these systems are beginning to standardize quality and food safety at unprecedented levels. Successful supermarkets such as Nakamat, Tuskies, and Naivas uh, have the capacity to streamline the procurement processes into efficient supply chain systems that provide market alternatives um, at the farm gate and stimulate the agriculture sector capital investment. Many modern food retailers in Nairobi have been investing in their food supply chains by working directly with farmers and providing extension services to them. As a result, the food supply chain systems providing supermarkets with perishable food products um, are becoming direct and efficient while also supporting domestic the, the domestic agriculture economy, uh, particularly in peri urban Nairobi. So while this has positive implications for su food security and poverty al alleviation, in some of the most economically marginalized communities in East Africa, it's also evident that these quality products are, are inaccessible to lower socioeconomic demographics. So while there are extension services and financial benefits for farmers that supply food retailers, those who do not are left to supply the informal food economy at reduced prices and with little to no standardized quality control in the process. Uh, with the proliferation of supermarket economies in Nairobi and the subsequent demand for quality products from farmers, uh, this may lead to an increasingly large gap between quality and sanitary standards between the formal and informal food economies. So improving access to markets for farmers must be a critical element to any strategy aiming to develop a secure and sustainable food system in Nairobi. With the proliferation of modern food retailing within the city, policymakers must focus on the informal food economy as a viable space for innovation and development while simultaneously recognizing and addressing the diversity of educational, trade, technological, and governance challenges um, to poverty reducing growth in Kenya and, and the East African region as a whole. As part of this agenda, supermarkets have a really important role to play in sparking capital investment within the informal food economy and facilitating innovation in ways that benefit both the growth of 
modern food retailing, the modern food retailing industry, and um, the accessibility of safe and nutritious foods for, for all people. So that's the end of this presentation, um, but I'd like to welcome Curtis Finley to the stage right now. He's going to have a few remarks on current research being conducted as well as future opportunities. Hello, my name's Curtis Finley. Uh, from February to May, thanks to the generous scholarship from Queen Elizabeth Scholars, I had the privilege of participating in UFE's East Africa internship in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, along with, sorry, along with Anisha Dillon and Sydney Raison. I'm just gonna give a brief description of one of the projects we worked on, which was developing a survey sampling informal food vendors in Dar es Salaam. Uh, this survey is currently being carried out in Dar by UFV's current interns in Tanzania under the guidance of RD University. This project was really the next logical step in continuing on from the supermarket projects that Sierra, Josh, and Jeremy had worked on. Our adapted survey looked to collect data on the role, or sorry, in looking to transfer the supermarket research over to informal markets, we adapted the surveys that the last group had used. Our adapted surveys look to collect data on the role that informal food vendors play in food procurement, specifically as it rate relates to food accessibility for the urban poor in Dar es Salaam. In just in ad adjusting the survey, one of the major realities to be aware of in terms of urban food accessibility in the global south is that, as pointed out by Dr. Crush earlier, um, the major barriers to food accessibility is not necessarily production or supply, but rather the financial pos positions of households and location of food retailers. For example, marginalized populations may live close to food sources such as supermarkets, but they may not be able to afford prices of supermarkets. Uh, vice versa, individuals may have the economic means to purchase food, but geographical distance may restrict, and, um, uh, restrict accessibility and drive up the financial costs of food in terms of transportation fees and opportunity costs of time. Uh, this is especially relevant in urban areas with weak transportation infrastructure and in urban areas where urban poor may lack uh, refrigeration, meaning more trips are necessary. Informal vendors are seen as being key to addressing accessibility in these lower economic areas as they are often located within these neighborhoods. Um, Price-wise, these markets may actually be more expensive per unit than supermarkets, but they promote affordability by repackaging food into smaller, more affordable quantities. There are, however, concerns that as informal markets try to promote affordability, the nutritional quality of food available declines. Um, keeping these realities in mind, we adapted the survey um, which is currently being carried out by students to collect a variety of data from the individual informal vendors, including location, socioeconomic class of customers, merchandise sold, packaging size, prices, wholesale sources, fluctuations in supply and food quality and quantity. Um, we were geography students, so we designed the survey more for spatial analysis, but the data collected could be used, analyzed in a variety of ways to give a better picture of the current role that the informal markets are playing in procurement of food by the lower social economic classes in Dar es Salaam. Uh, moving forward, the project, with the project, there is also potential on talk of moving the survey onto other urban centers around East Africa.